Hey, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about the trot. Should you train it? Should you use it on the ground? Should you use it under saddle? What are the benefits? Are there any? What are the drawbacks? This is something that I've been getting asked a lot. So I thought I would just do a video on it for you guys. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and I only have a little bit of video footage to show you today, but I wanted to talk about it anyway, and also to show you, I mean, so this book, The Easy Gated Horses by Lee Ziegler, is always recommended. Um, I haven't read the whole thing, um, but everything I read says it does line up with what I believe about gated horses in terms of that you can ride them on a loose rein, you don't want them hollow, these are the footfalls. I'll be going through a little bit more in depth about the footfalls soon uh, using this book and another book. Uh, so we are going to talk about the trot. Sometimes, so I'm not quite sure where to begin here. This is something that is very controversial for some people. Some people when you say you're training your horse to trot, say if you're doing endurance or long distance, people will jump on you and say, why would you ever let a gated horse trot? You bought a smooth gated horse, why would you do that? Well, it's up to each individual rider. I personally like walk trot canter horses, um, but let's talk about the benefits of the trot. So first of all, let me just say that there, if you have a pacey horse, there is a huge benefit in training your horse to trot. Now, my big caveat is that the trot should be done in balance with the back lifted. So head down, lifting the base of the neck, lifting the withers, lifting the back. Let me read you a few excerpts from this book, uh, Easy Gated Horses, uh, that I think are important. And if you're not sure about the collection thing, you can go back and check my video from last week where I ranted about collection. And I referenced this book as well as many other books about what collection is. Okay, so this is a little technical, but bear with it as sh there's one sentence in particular I want you guys to hear. She says the mechanics of the horse's body. When, very simply, when tension is increased in the ligament system, the back rises is said to bascule or round. When it is decreased, the back sags downward and is called inverted or hollow. When tension is maintained at a moderate resting level, the back is carried in a neutral position, which is what we want for most gates is actually the neutral position. Why? Why not round? That's a great question. So continuing on, she talks about the three kinds of general back and body positions. Round, a tightened dorsal ligament system with strong abdominal muscles, flexed hind legs, combining to lower the hindquarters from the lumbrosacral junction. That's round. Neutral is a working dorsal ligament system functioning without being stretched through, low, through the lowering of the hindquarters with no downward flexion at the lumbrosacral joint. And the lumbrosacral joint is, the, uh, is in the hip. Hollow, a relatively slack dorsal ligament system combined with slack abdominal muscles, abdominal muscles and no sustained downward flexion of the lum, lumbosacral joint. Okay. And then she goes through and has the neutral position. Most horses, gated or non-gated, spend most of their time in some degree of a neutral position. Not super round, but also not hollow. Uh, and I would say that when they're doing moving correctly, this is true. A horse in this position maintains just enough tension in his ligament cable system to hold his back level. This is especially important for supporting a rider. With no obvious sag or rise to his spine, his abdominal muscles work just enough to keep his belly from sagging downward, but not enough to tip the pelvis or flex his lumbosacral junction. Okay, this is how most gated horses are gating if they're doing it correctly. The rounded or collected position, and she goes on to talk about more, so there's more in depth if you have the book, you can look on page 35. The horse rounds his back and starts to collect his body by tightening his ab abdominal muscles, causing the pelvis to tip downward from the lumbosacral junction and increasing tension in his ligament system. This is again, very technical. As a result of this flexion in his spine, the base of his neck lifts and eventually his entire neck and head also rise. So it's talking about how you don't lift the head and neck up, you get the horse to tuck his core so much and tighten that system so much that the back end drops and the front rises. 
Uh, and then here, this is really good. So this is something you can look for. Indications that a horse has been working in a rounded position. And I will contrast that with horses that have been working in a hollow position. And it's actually something that I want you to go check on your horses. So a well-defined line along the abdomen at the rectus abdominis muscle and a tight belly. Full muscles in the haunches. Not lots of hollow places. I want to do an in-depth video on this it's coming soon. A full, full strong muscles on either side of the backbone. This is something I'm starting to notice. Since I read this, I start to see this. So you have horses that are hollow and you can tell because the spine is sticking up. Now we're not talking about a horse that's 30, but horses that are six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 to 20 or older that have the, when you sit on them, it's really uncomfortable, not because of their withers, but because their spine is sticking up because there's no muscle built up next to the spine, the longissimus dorsi muscle. I believe it's how you say it. I got it wrong. It's okay. I'm sorry. That muscle should be built up. If it is not, if the spine is above the, is the highest part of the back, you have a problem. Uh, smooth, full muscling along the top of the neck, along the crest, and just in front of the withers. Holes in front of the withers is a really good indication that your horse is working hollow. No obvious enlargement of the muscles on the underside of the neck or shoulders. So when your horse is being worked hollow or not lifting the withers in the base of the neck, the underside is going to be muscled. Uh, if they aren't, if they're ridden round, then they won't have that built up neck. So let's look at this uh, on this page. This is page 37. She talks about indications that a horse has been working in an inverted or hollow position. A sagging belly with no visible muscle tone in the abdominal muscles. Flat muscles on either side of the backbone, a prominent spine, some downward sway to the back. A hunter, a heavy muscling on the underside of the neck. You see this all the time. And a hunter's bump or not at the highest point of the croup over the lumbosacral junction. <clears throat> okay. So that's just a lot of stuff that I, some people are going to like and some people aren't. So let's get into more interesting stuff. Uh, so generally, easy gated horses do not reach the degree of roundness necessary for collected trot work, let alone needed for a piaf. Okay, basic. But this, this sentence here, down a little bit farther, I'm going to read this whole paragraph. Despite the arched necks and high heads you may see in some gated horses, very few of them work with their bodies in more than a slightly rounded neutral position. And I would add most are hollow or inverted. To test the degree of true collection possible in any particular easy gait, ride a gated horse in his gait. Then teach him to round his body correctly, raising the base of the neck, creating a bascule in his back, so basically lifting the back. Then teach him to round, uh, creating and working with sustained downward flexion at the lumbosacral junction in a truly collected position, which again takes time for them to sustain. So this sentence right here is super important. If you're a pacey horse, listen up. As he becomes more round, he will generally lose his easy gait and start trotting. Let me say that again. As he becomes more round, he will generally lose his easy gait and start trotting. Okay, that right there, that is the key. All that stuff was, was preface. Um, it, <clears throat> when we teach the horse to start rounding his back, he moves away from whatever he's doing and begins to become more trotty. So if you have a pacey horse, teaching them to round and lift their back is going to teach them to go toward the trot. Now, you may say, but Ivy, I don't want the trot. Well, I don't blame you. I don't, I mean, if you want a gait and you're going to ride for miles, I want a gait too, not a trot. <clears throat> but for horses that are pacey, most people complain that they cannot get their horse out of the pace. And right there, and this is, I actually, I agree with it. Right there is, she, she's talking about how gated horses will move away from their gait or the pace into the trot when they lift their back. Now, we want to take our pace and move toward the gait, which inevitably means toward the trot. And so the trot can be very helpful, whether you do it on the ground or under saddle, to help the horse move well. Now, she talks about lifting the base. Let me just read it again because you might have missed it. So, to test the degree of true collection possible, ride a gated horse in his gait. Then teach him to round his body correctly, raising the base of his neck and uh, lifting the back, basically. I'm paraphrasing. So, let me get out this book, Anatomy in Action. You can buy this and the videos online. If I could have shown you one of the videos, I would have, because it shows a horse trotting over 
uh, raised ground poles. Um, and it's pretty, it's amazing. It's probably one of my favorite videos, I'm trying to find it, um, that I find one of the best videos that I've watched, and I've watched it a couple times. Okay. <clears throat> this horse is walking, you can read the title, walking over raised poles. So if you look at this horse, uh, you see how the neck there isn't much of an S shape to the spine. We haven't talked a lot about this, but you can clearly see that he's telescoping his neck, stretching forward, and he's lifting the base of the neck. Now this is just walking, but it's over raised ground poles, okay? But that's where I would start, is doing this with uh, raised poles, and you can just do it at the walk. And I'm hoping to get footage of this soon. Now I have to find the right page where she has the horse trotting over raised poles somewhere in here okay and I'm just gonna show you this one frame this is trotting over raised poles now in the video that she uses well whoa, 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 stay with me so in the video she uses she actually doesn't use this horse she uses uh, that gray horse let me see if they have that in here they don't but there's a picture of him doing it uh, and and that horse they said he's you know really good at it because he's like their champion or, you know, at, at, he's the best one at, uh, okay, so they have a picture of it in here, but this is not what they, so here's the picture of this horse. This is horse is trotting over raised poles. You see him stretching really far forward. Look at his neck, how elongated it is, and he's lifting the base of the neck. He's also getting beautiful shoulder extension. Now, in this video, which I can't share with you guys because I paid to use it, um, she talks about something that says, that the horse doesn't have the reach of the shoulder, doesn't, you know, isn't have the freedom of shoulder until he's lifting the base of the neck. Now, I have been trying to do tons of research on this because I really want to know more because lifting the base of the neck, I believe, is key because we all know that gated horses need to have freedom of the shoulder. They need to be able to extend and loosen that shoulder. And so many people, right, argue that the horse needs to have their head up. But if there's actual proof that lifting the base of the neck actually frees the shoulder, then we should see no more of this head high stuff. We should only see lifting the base of the neck. So on the ground, you can lunge your horse or do in hand work and you can do trot, but you want that head to be down like, a, I should have saved my spot, like the horse in the picture. And, and it's not down so much as it's out, but this is just beautiful. If you guys can get your horse to move like this, whoops, over ground poles, this is what we want. Look how, look at the reach of the shoulder. You could really see that how that the scapula is going forward and how the head is forward, the nose is out. He's totally at liberty. There's nothing on him. He's you can see the abdominal muscles are tight and he's stepping under him. And yes, it's a trotting horse, but you can do this with your gated horses. Let me see if there's any questions here. Okay. Uh, Lisa says it's a favorite book of hers, The Easy Gated Horses. Patrice says hi. Wendy says great book. I've read it a few times. When I lived in Colorado, I took lessons from her too. Yeah, I've never taken lessons, but that would be awesome. Um, Chrissy says Callie is an oddball. Her back muscles need work, but I think it's saddle fit and immaturity. So Chrissy, two things. One, I agree. Some of it's her, just her age uh, and saddle fit totally, but also you don't ride her very round because she's trotty so this is not a bad thing uh, but if you wanted her to really build those muscles you'd actually encourage her to drop her head even more and kind of almost have a cue for her to trot you don't have to because she we want her to gait but if she were to trot or even on the ground go head down and trot I think it would help Annette says, I love my endurance gated horses to trot sometimes better than pacing. Yes. So a lot of endurance or long distance will train the trot and a gait. And again, that's really good. Lynn says, hi from middle Tennessee. Hi, Lynn. Uh, Jody says, so head down is key. Yes. Um, head down and, and not just head down because we, we talked about it last week in the video. It's about... It's about using the body correctly. Head down is the beginning of it. So if I were, so I talk about collection and I read a whole bunch of, uh, last week I read a whole bunch of very technical descriptions of it. If I were to go to a clinic and say, okay, we are gonna get your horse to engage the longimus dorsi muscle and you have to use all the ligaments in the horse's back and they need to you know, lift the pectoral muscles or you know, the inside lift the withers, everybody would look at me like, like that, that's what they would do. 
they would be like, what, what the heck are you talking about? And so what I train is something that you can do from home and I have free videos on it, which is starting with the head down. So the head down is not just to get them to carry their head low like a quarter horse. The goal is to get them to lift the base of the neck, to start that process of going long and low and forward. And some horses, that's all they need to get gait is to stop trying to ask them to put their head up. Now, if you have a trotty horse, that head down will encourage more trot, which you may want if you're having a horse that doesn't have a lot of muscle. So I saw a horse at a clinic this past week who was six and I wish I had taken a picture of his back because he was six years old, so it's not very old, but he, you could tell from everything in the description of the book <clears throat> that he was ridden head high. He had big muscles under his neck and he had his spine was sticking up and he had these little, little muscles right alongside the spine that did not really support. So it didn't support the rider's weight. He's clearly ridden with his head up. Uh, whether or not he has a natural high headset, he's clearly ridden that way. Again, a horse having a high head, if they're never ridden, it doesn't really matter too much. As soon as you put the weight of a rider on, it matters so much. Val says, so it's okay for gated horses to also trot. Sorry I missed the beginning, and can you do head down very easily on the trail? So Val, great question. Yes, it's totally fine to trot. Please do go back and watch the beginning, and I'm going to show you a video example in just a minute. Um, as far as your other question, can you do head down easily on the trail? Uh, you need to train this at home, whether you have a small pasture, you don't have to have a big area to train it at home. Train it at the walk and the faster speed. Check out my free videos on how to train head down. They're totally free. And uh, uh, then you continue doing it farther away from home and you do it on the trail. Uh, I, don't, I do not recommend you start training it on the trail. Uh, and I've got more videos on how to work on head down when you have anxious horses on my private training group. All right, let's talk about this example. So a few years ago, like five, I had a lady come to one of my clinics and she had a Missouri Fox trotter. And she said that her horse was very pacey, but she watched my head down videos like six months before the clinic. And so she did the head down work and her horse went from pacing to trotting. Now you may be like, Ivy, we don't want the trot. Of course, we want a smooth gait, but she brought the horse to the clinic that had been very pacey. She did head down and the horse was trotting. She's like, help, what do I do now? It took, so right, the, the lessons are three one hour lessons each day. The first lesson, it took like 27 minutes and the horse was gating. And then here's footage of the horse gating at the, on the third day. Uh, it was just, it became a gating machine for me and the owner. So let me go ahead and skip to that. Uh, here's the beginning. You can see this horse right there starting to trot. I'm lift, I'm not letting her stay trotting, or him. Uh, I'm lifting up right away to ask the horse to get out of the trot, but then I give a loose rein and then there's stop and praise there. Um, so you'll see me lifting because she want, he wanted to trot and I'm not letting him trot. And then as soon as he starts to gate, drop the reins. It's beautiful. Okay. So that's just day one. Look at that gate coming. And it, it took, I mean, it took so little time and the owner hopped on and she had gate, but let me just go ahead and show you. That's the owner riding and then I hop on and ride. So here's this horse ridden in a snaffle um, and he was just started to become a gating machine and he went from being pacey, owner did head down and then got him trotty and then in the clinic in just three days he became a gating machine. So of any exercise, especially if you have a pacey horse, you want to work on is head down uh, because she took her very pacey horse, got him trotty and here he is gating. Look at that. Let me give you audio. There you go. Getting just a little trotty there. Good job. Okay. I don't have a lot of other footage. My goal this summer is to get more footage of working horses in trot. Um, let's see. Nancy says, we ride on some very rough trails with tree roots, rocks, quite uneven. I want my trotty Tennessee walking horse to trot on that type of terrain so he doesn't have to keep stopping in order to gate. I work on gate when the ground is appropriate. Nancy, that's fantastic because you're right. It's very difficult for them to hold a gate over rough terrain like that, but trotting is so much easier. I think that's totally a wonderful thing to do. 
Louis says, what would you suggest for the best bit for a foxtrotter? Um, the bit doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all unless you're showing. You want to find a bit that's comfortable for the horse. And I suggest, of course, snaffles. A French link, the Rock and S Ray snaffle. But it also depends, Luis, on what you're riding in now and what you're willing to do the training for. Uh, Marla says, you lift with both reins. So if the horse is trotty, okay, this is very important. If the horse is trotty, I lift with both reins to lift the head up. If the horse is pacey, I train head down. Uh, so I hope that's clear. It's very important distinction. If your horse is pacing, you go for head down, head down low, because we want them to lift the back, use their core muscles. And if they're trotty, we actually want them to hollow just a teeny tiny bit just a little tiny bit we want them to hollow, enough to get them out of the trot. And then we give them a loose rein and we want them to keep the head level. I'm not holding my reins up and holding the head up. I want them just to start gating and then they get a loose rein. Hopefully that makes sense there. So you can totally, I totally recommend for young horses, for pacey horses, to do walking over uh, raised ground poles or just regular poles. Start out with them on the ground <clears throat> and gradually raise them up and then also work on, on trotting. And I talked last week about the camel walk and talked about using walk poles or ground poles to help them get out of that. It's a very similar thing. You also, if you have a horse with a camel walk, doing the trot can be very beneficial. Right now, I don't have any footage of training a horse to trot, uh, but I will hopefully get that this summer. Marla says, when a horse paces, they do it with a high head. Uh, well, sometimes they can also do it with a low head. And then in that case, you need to add in other things to get them to round their back. Once their head is down, they could still pace, which happens about 50% of the horses. 50% I work with, you get the head down, they start gating. The other 50%, they'll put the head down and they'll still be pacing. And then you need to add in like ground poles, leg yield, stop back up and go forward, um, which I talk about in other videos, which I will try to share later. But good questions. Uh, so, but many of them pace with their head high or do the stepping pace. And you can just Google gated horses online and you will see a lot of, a lot of examples of that. Uh, okay, let's see here. If there's any other comments. Uh, if anybody has any comments, let me know. Uh, we had a good number of people watching, which is great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's the only example I have. Again, trotting is good especially if they have their head out and down, you know, long and low, and they're going forward and using poles or logs is, or cavaletti is a really good way to help them build those muscles, especially if they're younger. So I get lots of questions of like, how do I help my horse gait when I can't ride them because they're younger? Do, you know, in hand or long line or lunging, big circles, going with the head down and letting them trot if they need to and building up those back muscles so that they can carry a rider. And they may lift their, they will lift their head up later, but we need to build a strong core and a strong top line first. Okay, I think this video has been long enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love the questions and the interaction. I'm also doing a live video on Wednesday and Friday this week, and I don't even remember what the schedule is. Let me look really quickly. I, I make them and then I forget what days I did which. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wednesday is breed doesn't matter. And I really want to talk about that because people would ask, well, they're like, well, I have a Paso. You know, do you train them or how do you train them? Which videos for Passos? All of them. Uh, or people ask about Icelandics or they're like, do you only train Missouri Fox Trotters? I'm like, I don't know where you get that. I work with all breeds and I often don't even tell you what breed the horse is because it doesn't matter. I train them based on where the horse is at because I don't show. So if you show, it would matter and you and some of the things I would do would help, but it's not specifically for show. And Friday is what to do with a hard mouth horse and how to switch to a snaffle. So we're basically talking about how to get softness or people are like, I ha my horse is ridden in a big shank, I can't ride him in a snaffle. And we're gonna talk about how you make that switch and do it safely. And the fact that there's no such thing as a hard mouth horse. Anyway, uh, uh, plus maybe I'll fit a rant in there. People have given me some ideas for a rant and everybody liked the last one I did. You guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week. You got this.